my father always believed that whatever happens happens for the good yeah so that is the way we think what i believe in that the steel it has a beautiful culture wow while it has given us a lot of values it has also given us a sense of belonging you know and that is what perhaps has kept all the that a steel employees beat people who have retired 20 30 40 50 years back they still come mm. back and connect you know of course yeah. one of the things uh, which i strongly feel is that parents have too many expectations of their children yes and they want their children to be what they want them to be not yeah. what the child wants to be So great morning audience uh, thank you so much for watching all the videos today we have uh, as our guest dr dipali mishra she is a phd in history and of course she has got many hats which we are going to talk about i'm pretty sure that you can reflect you can also reflect back on your life uh, and connect with what i'm going to share so you no know, we all keep on meeting many people in our life uh, but the, but there are there are just a few people there are just few people i think the number of such people is very small very little in this huge world i'm talking about some people with whom whenever you meet you get a feeling that they are absolutely untouched with the vagaries of life you know you talk about anger frustration negativity jealousy so you get a feeling that these people have been absolutely untouched whenever you talk to these people the only feeling which you get is that of inspiration you know positivity something which is all about moving forward and i think today uh, i'm uh, i'm so privileged to have dr dipale mishra you are the only person about whom i can i can i can think of only one word while talking to you and that is the word of inspire words like inspiration positivity and something to do with making the world better i don't know how do you how did you build this uh, power and habit i think i'm i'm pretty sure that when i talk a bit about ma'am i think people will start getting some connection but still i think we are we are looking forward to hear her more So, Dr. Dipali Mishra has been for a decade. Uh, she has been a consultant with Tata Business Excellence Group under Tata Sons, and uh, she is the teacher to teachers. So, she has uh, actually mentored and taught and uh, trained two thousand five hundred teachers, principals, and people from the field of education. She has been an avid educationist. She, of course, has been a topper in her uh, university days, and she also is the third degree reiki channel and i know for sure that she also has been things like meditation so ma'am i think let's take a pause here and just i wanted to ask you one thing how do you maintain this this person or this personality which only exudes one word and that is inspiration because this the name of this channel on which this video is going to be uploaded is uh, stay inspired with haroon i think the entire channel and all the audience is going to be inspired like never before while listening to you thank you so much ma'am for first of all accepting my invitation and i wanted to check with us how does it happen and actually i'm talking about the days almost 20 years ago i think 15 20 years ago when when i had the privilege of knowing you uh, to some extent while working in tata steel how do you bring out this personality which only leaves people with with happiness with joy with positivity with inspiration with something uh, you know while while with with something to look forward to life so how does it happen i think i know that this is my perception but i think this is what i felt like sharing before we start the conversation ma'am thank you so much for joining us and maybe we can start with this little uh, thing if in case you want to share as i said audience this is going to be free flowing and then we'll have some more queries over to you ma'am so arun so arun let me first thank you for inviting me to this conversations <laughs> and uh, you have spoken a lot about me maybe it's an eye opener for me as well whatever you have said uh, but when you talk about uh, positivity it basically it comes to me from my father mm. and uh, you know from my childhood i've had a very happy childhood wow and uh, my father always believed that whatever happens happens for the good yeah so that is the way we think what i believe in and uh, i have deep faith in sai baba so all those things help me to remain positive and of course later on influences of my husband am mishra you know him very well yeah yeah he is absolutely has been tremendous 
in uh, continuing to make keep me positive. You know, so if that answers your question. Yeah. So you, have, you, have, you have given all the credit to people, to some other people, but I'm pretty sure that there is some something which is intrinsic to you, ma'am, which of course will will unravel as we as we proceed. Uh, yeah, I I believe that God is in heaven. All is right with the world, you know. So that's my intrinsic belief. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm I'm just thinking about the days in Tata Steel. I'm talking about 2002, 2003, 2004, five kind of you know almost more than 15 years older or old days. I recall you having taken many initiatives to, you know, get people together uh, uh, while having something like meditation or some kind of talks or some kind of, you know, things related to, uh, you know, something connected to the field of education. So you used to bring people together. I just told, I also recall the days when you uh, started a, a school so that many employees, kids who used to, you know, go to public schools, I think government schools, government schools, they are the right word. They also can yeah. get a very good uh, education. I think the name of the school was Bal Bharti. They were, I think this is this is the name which 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 I recall. I, and I always feel that you were all about bringing people together, be it the students, be it education enthusiasts, be it uh, trainers, be it uh, I think uh, you know officers and their spouses also. I could see a lot of programs happening in uh, the officers club in uh, West Bokaro division. I'm talking about one of the divisions of Tata Steel. So, ma'am, how uh, when did you start this practice of yoga, for example, or Reiki? How many years it has been for you uh, since you started practicing some of these very positive habits? And then we'll talk about uh, the journey of quality and education. So, uh, so okay, let me start with exercise before yoga. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Physical fitness. So that yeah. started, I think, uh, maybe around 1980s. Okay. Okay. Uh, with my husband when we were in staying in Jamshedpur and then we were living in a flat where there would be other company, other, uh, you know, uh, other flat residents, yeah. uh, friends. We used to go for morning walks together and that's how my fitness regime started and we continued it ever since then, you know. So my... alongside yoga, yoga got introduced slowly and yeah. I think your wife has been very instrumental in me, instrumental in inspiring me also. <laughs> she still, she so, still yes, she, I know she still continues. And um, so there was something I learned from her as well. And of course, the, you know, the media has been very, very kind, I may say, in helping us learn some of, some of that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, when, yeah. when you talk about getting people together, you know, I'm a very people person. You know, I, I enjoy interacting with people. I can go up to people whom I feel like talking to, even if I don't know them. Yeah. I can go up to them and I can uh, always uh, introduce myself and get to know that person. So that's been in me. You know, in fact, when I was in West Bukaru, uh and I was uh, waiting to get a, get a residence, I used to stay in the guest house. And uh, that used to be one of the things I tried to learn about the people of West Bukaru because I had not really met all of them well enough, you know. So every time I would spend some, I, I would devote a lot of time talking to them over the phone, and in fact, to keep myself, you know, remember it, I mean, my memory, I have a not, I try to keep people in my mind, but then, you know, with me, memory is something which I need to strengthen further and further. So sometimes I forget, you know, yeah. and so then I used to literally note down, you know, because when I was talking to people and I would be talk, asking them about themselves and their families, I would be making notes at one end, you know, so that I remember and I <laughs> try to bring those note conversations back, you know, to keep keep people connected, to talk to them, to understand them. And, you know, people, of course, love talking about themselves, you know. Mm. So that's the best way to draw out people, I feel. Awesome, awesome. So there are a couple of points which I'm connecting with what you just said. My first thing is that I recall uh, I got married in 2000, 2003. And then after marriage, my wife came to... Uh, this is a small place called West Bokar, a small and beautiful place of, called West Bokar, which is a division of Tata Steel. And uh, she was pretty new to the place and she still recalls that place as one of the happiest places primarily because of some of the events which she became a part of. And for most of the events which she became a part of, which have, which give her you know, so much of positive, positive thoughts and feelings while talking about the place. Behind all these events, I think you were a person who used to bring people together. And I think this is just one example. We are just talking about Divya. But I think when we look back, I'm pretty sure there must have been hundreds of people, thousands of people who, while watching this video, they will start going back down the memory lane. They will start thinking about some of these happiest moments which they got 
thanks to you and thank you so much even, well thank you for that and uh, even even well uh, while i was in west bengal yeah i mean while divya had a, one of the happiest memories of the place i i myself give a lot of i mean i i also feel that i some of my happiest memories are my 3 years in west bengal you know three because the connections you make with people there and uh, it's a small place i recall so, that um, mm. children parents were always very worried about their children and their education you know so how to get people together you know it was one of the uh, ways i could do it was spending time yeah, with the children yeah. i have i had opened a book club where i would spend a lot of time with them students yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, try to give them some exposure to books Yeah, yeah, yeah and absolutely. reading and um, i recall that when there was a book fair which happens every year in jamshedpur yeah i did did make time to ensure that they could come to jamshedpur stay here visit the book fair and get acquainted with books and get a feel of love for books you know oh, and certainly ma'am next we, maybe maybe whenever the, the book fair happens next time i would love to come with all my with bag full of my books yes <laughs> yes up. you must <laughs> yes, you must <laughs> Ma'am, another thing which I'm thinking of is the fact that uh, I think as you as you rightly said that those three years have been one of the most beautiful years of uh, life. You know, today after having worked in various multinationals, uh, I still recall one thing that when I, when I thought of having these heart to heart, I call this H to H C conversations, heart to heart conversations. I think most of the guests are guests are coming from West Bengal. That's the kind of bond which we still have. I see, see yes. my most recent experiences have been with some of the multinationals and of course some of the people are going to come but see 80% of guests are coming from west bokaro you know this is the kind of bond which we create and i think tata steel is an institution it's bigger than an institution one has to actually conduct deep study to know this heart to heart connections which employees build with uh, this organization so, this is absolutely so awesome. i would like to i would like to add to that you know yeah ma'am uh Tata Steel it has a beautiful culture wow while it has given us a lot of values it has also given us a sense of belonging you know and that is what perhaps has kept all the Tata Steel employees beat people who have retired 20 30 40 50 years back they still come mm. back and connect you know of course 50s perhaps too long a time because people won't be there now i suppose yeah, yeah, yeah. but then people do come back and whenever they meet they meet as if they have been meeting for so many years together that sense of belonging still continues to remain with people you know i recall two things i recall two absolutely i recall two things while thinking about tata steel first thing is that uh, for the duration that i worked in tata steel i always used to get a feeling that tata steel has become my identity and this is still uh, continues to be true tata yes. has become your identity you get a feeling that without tata as i mean i don't know you start wondering whether you have got what is your identity and that is because it's like a huge family which is behind you it's like a huge family normally i think people while talking about their identity they normally talk about their family but i think tata has become such a huge umbrella which protects you under all kind of from all kind of you know weather conditions and this also is something which is behind you which is always supporting you i'm getting a very clear uh, thinking that actually tatas are much bigger than institutions and i wish we yes, had more yes. groups like tatas in this country outside this country as well so tatas are you know they instill in all their employees a sense of pride a right. tremendous pride and belonging to the company i recall yeah. an incident where we had gone i think to um, shimla and we were staying in one of the hotels where tatas you know used they used to give, give us the privilege of uh, you know accommodation yeah. residential accommodation in places wherever we wanted to go to so the moment the hotel manager came to know that we were from tata steel he there was a lot of respect which immediately started becoming visible in his behavior yeah. towards us so wherever you go you will find that people become extremely respectful when they come to know that you belong to the tata family so that's the I kind of trust the loyalty I, I, I... i recall having worked in tata group for 18 years 10 years almost 9 to 10 years in tata still and then 9 to 10 years in a company called tata blue still and then i joined another multinational i recall having gone to one of the customer site and the when i you know and then of course he knew that i'm coming from one company but the moment he knew that i have worked in tata still he immediately offered me tea and water and this <laughs> 
this is the yes. power yeah. this is the respect which this uh, name has yeah. and i think it has got huge and deep capital d w e p deep roots which people will take a lot of time to understand i think it's all True. about people and connections ma'am the, the other thing which i was to, which i wanted to share with people while talking about your days uh, in west bokaro and of course other uh, way, other way as well is the fact that though you have trained uh, 2500 more than that perhaps than that's that. just yes, a number which i put people, yeah and people from the field of education you said something which is very important you said that by nature you you like uh, approaching or talking to people whether they might be approachable whether they might like or may, may not like right some of the, there are some people who actually look look to be very very silent and when they have got their own facade but still you are a person who feel like reaching out to those people which is one of the key requirements for being in the field of hr so i'm just wondering how to create a forum so that you train thousands of hr professionals because i know hr professionals who have come to the field of hr and still they would like to talk to only only a few top people or or or, or else just a few people with whom they have got very positive vibes and they are not very comfortable talking to a majority of people who might be in their own cocoon in their own, own in their own shell and i think that's the most important test for a person to be a good hr professional so i think we need to create a forum so that you can start training thousands any time any time you know i know i i know i can make people comfortable so that's the first step towards a good relationship And I think that's something which I think I don't know whether people can learn it ever. Do 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 you think that this is one thing? I won't call it a skill which people can learn because if people have to learn, I think in HR people have to learn this skill only. Then they can reach out to all the people and not only limited, stay limited only to a few people. Yeah, the skill can be certainly learned, but then being natural is something which comes. Something which is, which just comes. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I recall because I personally came from the field of selling and marketing to the field of HR. I know that there are certain skills which become a part of it. Probably this is one of the things which brought me to this field. I think it's a very important thing. I think it's very difficult for people to build also. So, ma'am, I think there is one topic on which you touched. I think my apologies. I should have spoken about it. The field of fitness. So, can we learn a bit about your fitness regime, for example, on daily basis? Which are the things which you do so that people get inspired? Because, of course, I don't don't want to talk about age and all that. At this age, you are. looking shinier and uh, fitter than many people half your age so what is the secret ma'am let let's talk about some of these fitness things which you do okay okay yeah. so if you talk about fitness as i told you it began i've been practicing fitness and bridge daily exercising for uh, about maybe 40 45 years wow. and uh, gradually it has built up become a part of my life you know so i can't do without it of course i have been influenced by my husband because he has inspired me to be disciplined you know that's something which i have learned from him and maybe i still need to learn a lot lot more about disciplining but then i spend about an hour and a half daily about four days a week not yeah. more than four days so my regime of fitness includes a uh, half an hour of yoga and exercises about 10 to 15 minutes of gymming gym equipment i used to go to the gym but post pandemic i do some gym gym equipment yeah. from home itself yeah and then about half an hour of walking so that's my fitness regime you know so it about one and a half hours and meditation 10 minutes wow. of meditation ma'am i reiki think has been uh, yeah. yeah i would just like to add more that reiki has been another inspiration you know it it helps us to keep on auto suggesting to ourselves you know that one of the positive affirmations of reiki is you know sarvesh khanna who was my guru he used to mention that keep giving yourself positive affirmations that i am a healthy person mm. i am much better than yesterday i have no diseases those are some of the positive affirmations which definitely help you to keep your mind strong as well as your body strong uh, that's mm. that's my fitness regime i i i remember now this is this is very inspiring i remember having heard of uh, this term called reiki way back while being in tata steel i'm mm. talking about 2005 2006 kind of you know those were the years and i think a little before that and yeah little before the field of coaching affirmations is one of those you know tens of rituals which people if these are like micro habits but then i always uh, make people or inspire people to practice affirmations for maybe 5 minutes also is good and maybe couple of minutes also is good enough and i think going by what you just said there is a connection all right so it's it's all about giving positive positive affirmations to oneself would, yes, would you like to share yes, something yes. ma'am would, would you like to share something 
would you love to share a little more on Reiki and how does it help? Uh, because I know there are people who are well versed with the topic, but there might be many people who might be uh, knowing, uh, willing to know more. And I think okay. there, there can be nobody better than you uh, to uh, share a few words on Reiki. Maybe, yeah. maybe I can throw a little bit of light on what Reiki is. Uh, Reiki as a practice, is it's a healing power, it's a healing energy, not a power, I would say. It's a healing energy. energy. And uh, I'm I understand that Reiki is actually originated in India, Buddhism, okay. but it uh, got lost along the way and it found its way into Japan. And from Japan, it has come back to us. So it's like a healing energy. It, I, I would simply, in very simple terms, if I were to say that when you are a child or even older and you're not feeling well and your mother puts her hand on your forehead, how does it help you? How, how does it make you feel? Very peaceful, very relaxed, and almost well. So that's the healing energy, which is comes with thought, mind, and body. Mm -hmm. So if you channel your mind to uh, bring all the energy into your hands, and through your hands, you pass on that energy to the person who mm -hmm. requires some energy to improve bodily as well as mentally. That's Reiki. Mm -hmm. Of course, one has to work with one's, uh, you know, uh, uh, one has to work to bring that energy to uh, channel it. Yeah. And that the gurus help us in this. The Reiki gurus, they give us, they, they, uh, they, uh, they give us, help us to uh, channelize the energy, if I may use the word. This is yeah. amazing, ma'am. Do you also, do you still conduct some programs on Reiki? Uh... No, I I don't conduct. I practice Reiki, but not regularly. I do practice Reiki, and I do pass on Reiki to people. I can do distance Reiki because I am a second and third degree channel, so I can do distance Reiki and uh, give Reiki to people. You know, positive energy. To which is which is awesome. One of my mentees uh, used to speak about pranic healing, so she is a yes. practitioner of pranic healing. Is there a connection between both these, or how both are different? Um, pranic healing is also another method, another method of healing, but uh, it's a bit different from uh, Reiki. Mm -hmm. It's uh, I'm not I'm not too well versed on pranic healing, so I will yeah, not because, be able to yeah, comment. Pranic healing people also say that you know you can also say, do pranic healing through some of these online programs and all that. Yeah. So there is something which 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 is different, which makes it different. So basically, it's the power of the mind. You know, it's all talking about the power of the mind. How mind, how powerful the mind is. And how you can, you know, when you do a meditation, you are actually trying to bring your mind under your control. And likewise, when you are trying to energy, channelize your energy and pass it on to somebody else, it's just passing yeah. on your energy to somebody else through your mind. Yeah, I know that's great. So, ma'am, mm -hmm. uh, coming to the field of, I wanted to spend a few minutes while talking about the field, while talking about quality, because one of my, one of my closest friends, he has been the topper of XLRI batch when I did XLRI in uh, in 2002 2003. So his status message has been constant on WhatsApp over the last more than ten years, and the line is quality changes the world. So I wanted to talk to you a bit on quality because you have been one of the advisors to Tata Sons on the in the field of quality. Would, would you like to share something about quality? Yeah. And this excellence model, something like this. So, yeah. so, so let me just uh, clarify. I have been working as an education consultant yeah. for uh, schools in Jamshedpur right. and how Tata Business Excellence got it, I mean, got to do, take on the ownership of managing this program. Okay. So Tata Steel started a program for uh, improving the quality of education of schools in Jamshedpur. There are uh, more than 100 schools in Jamshedpur, English medium, Hindi medium. I'm not talking about the government schools. If we were to include that, there would be much more. Yeah. So uh, because of their own success with the Tata Business Excellence Model, which Tata Steel adopted, I think, way back in, uh, I mean, 1990s, I think, if I'm wrong, not right, maybe yeah. earlier. Yeah. Uh, so once they were found, that does give them a lot of benefits. They wanted to pass on these benefits to schools as well. So okay. in 2003, this program was started for uh, schools of Jamshedpur. Right. It is around the same lines as the business excellence model, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which talks about uh, processes and results. Okay, So if you improve your processes, you get better results. If you have control over your processes and you continuously learn to improve them through looking at your results, that's the basic basic you know, uh, process, concept behind it. To uh, better results. So process yes. leads to better results. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yes. So that's the basic concept behind 
uh, the Education Excellence Program as well. It is, of course, uh, derived from the Malcolm Baldrige Performance Excellence Criteria. And uh, this is the program which I led. And uh, there were no, more than 65 schools involved in this program, at any, not at any one point of time, but over a period of time, you know, we have connected with more than 65 schools. They included English medium schools, they included the government schools, they included the private schools and uh, semi-government schools, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, we primarily tried to create a mindset for improvement with these schools. So we worked with them, we tried to encourage them to understand what their processes are. You know, schools used to find it very difficult. They said, who is a customer? We don't know. What is a stakeholder? We don't know. Okay. Yeah. So they needed to relate with these terms, you know. So then it was the, the, the criteria itself was broken down for their benefit into more simplistic terms. Like mm -hmm. we said, okay, student, teacher, yeah. parent, those are the terms they are familiar with. Okay. And gradually, they started to understand and uh, believe in the program. So today, if you talk to any of the participating schools, the principals primarily, and then some of the senior leaders, and many of the teachers as well, they are firm proponents of this program. And they have carried out in numerous improvement in their schools through this program and uh, won a lot of awards. There is an award named after Dr. Jam the former, I mean, late Dr. Jamshed Jayirani. Mm -hmm. uh, and this award is given to schools who achieve a certain uh, level of uh, excellence. And uh, during my time, four schools had already won yeah. this award. You know, so within a span of maybe ten years, they it no, not even ten years. During a span of nine years, during the time that I worked with Tata Business Excellence, mm -hmm. four schools had achieved that level of excellence. So there are a number of stories of uh, improvement, excellence, innovation. And I have captured these in a book which I have authored, yet to be published, of course, but I have captured many of these excellent stories. Wow. So mm -hmm. we are looking forward to the book coming, uh, getting published as soon as possible, because I'm pretty sure yes. this is going to add a lot of value to many people, because uh, I think I missed telling the audience that Dr. Dipali Mishra is also the mentor for Center for Educational Initiatives and Research. CEIR. So I'm pretty sure this book is going to have far-fetching uh, effects, ma'am. Well, I hope so too. By, I hope so too. By a yes. wide range of audience, wide group mm -hmm. of audience. So ma'am, this is awesome, ma'am. Uh, since you have been in the field of uh, education and uh, today we all know that, you know, it's a world of distraction where kids are having their own world and a lot of things people keep on doing and all that. So we don't have to speak much on this. People know. Would you like to give a couple of, uh, a few advice, advices to people, to parents, any parenting tips which you would like to share with uh, the parents of today? Of course, I'm also one of a parent. So we wanted to hear, 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 hear you on this topic. Yes, yes. Yeah. One of the things uh, which I strongly feel is that parents have too many expectations of their children. Yes. And they want their children to be what they want them to be, not yeah. what the child wants to be. Right. So... I was recently, yesterday, I had gone to a school for the underprivileged. I work with them. And uh, I was talking to the parents of the children of KG Nursery. Yeah. And I asked them, do you send your child to for tuitions? They said, yes. You know, so it's, it's actually appalling that at that age, the child has to go to a tuition also. And the children and, the, and these parents are not really very... Uh, I mean, they don't have that kind of resources, but they still want their child to be good, which is fine. So I told them at this age, tuitions are not what the children need. Not at, you know, six, seven, eight year, nine year old. Children need to be enjoying themselves, leading a happy life, building their character, learning values. So these are the things that need to be embedded in them. A physical health, mental health. These are more important at the age of eight, five, six, seven, eight, and nine years of age, you know. Academics will automatically flow, you know, and, you know, teachers are there to teach them. And when I meet teachers, I find that they are wonderful people. It's just that the respect which teachers ought to get, they are not able to get. But I think during the course of the pandemic, parents have realized how much teachers are working. Because if the teachers had not been working those two years or two and a half, three years of the pandemic, the children would have gone haywire. 
yeah, there have been a number of negative outcomes as well. But then, if the you just imagine if the teachers had not been there, so parents need to stop ex make, take, having too many expectations of their children. That's one of the first things I believe in. Yeah, very nice. Would you like to share some more uh, suggestions? Because I'm pretty sure you must be having you must be having an ocean of suggestions for people. I'm I, when I say suggestion, I'm saying this with very with a lot of humility. Because I know that as a parent at times, uh, some parents are too soft with their kids. I think the fact here is that, and that's what I have seen because I've been in the field of coaching. I, I, I know that uh, some of the biggest of challenges actually can also shape the life in a very positive way, provided people have got this winning mindset where they're looking at challenges as an opportunity. And yeah. if it is just the other way, people also crumble. So how to build uh, 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 kids in how to build that strong, strong mindset, you know, among kids so that as they grow up, they actually okay. uh, face the vagaries of the world and they are still are smiling. And uh, to put it in a short, I think in, in a summary, in a sentence, how to create, uh, how to, how to parent, how to take care of kids so that as they grow up, they have got a personality as inspiring as positive as you for example if i can <laughs> how to have that uh, that kind of mindset you know uh, okay so let me begin by saying that investing time with children is very important right. i would like to share my own childhood a little bit not much yeah uh, you know because my growing up years were the very happy years of my life i mean touch wood i always had a very happy life wow but my growing up years have been beautiful. I recall being surrounded by family and the best moments of my life. I, I never forget those days are the times we spent around the dining table. Wow. You know, parents, children, uncles, aunts, whoever were there, we all used to sit around the dining table, make sure that we had our meals together. That's important. Even today, it's not as if parents can't spend time to have meals with their children. Otherwise, you know, most of the time you find children having their meals in front of their own bedroom TV cell phone and all or that. wherever the TV may be or yeah. wherever, you know. You know, when you're sitting with your parents and your family around you, there are, those are the times when there are discussions around what's happening in your lives. What are the sad moments? What are the happy moments? What are the problems? And there you start building a strong foundation of values. Yeah. Trust, loyalty, values, you know. So unless a child has those embedded in him or her, the foundational years are not going to be very good. You know, yeah. WHO talks about uh, advocating um, investment in health in early childhood. The new national policy is talking about foundational literacy and numeracy only yeah. in early childhood. I want to add that embedding values in early childhood. Very they, they can only help in bringing up a strong character, ethical character. So the character is the most important thing that builds up. So the parent has to invest time in the child. Find time, invest time in the child. And share with the child, listen to the child. We don't often listen. We don't often listen. We just hear. And then they're looking at our mobiles. Yeah. If we find that the child is impinging upon my work, I pass out our mobile. Okay, you watch. You know, just this morning, but I was at breakfast somewhere. I was at breakfast somewhere. The kid, the, the kid was there. They had given the kid something, you know, to watch on the mobile or iPad. It's it's not. I I am not very happy with what's happening around us when we children when we parents stop yeah. investing time with the child. So that's my second uh, view. Another view on what helps to bring up a child. Very education and academic learning. Education is not just about academic learning. And that is not that is the kind of aspiration that parents have of their children. Yeah, yeah. Which is not, this, I feel, is the right important. way to go about. So, yeah. ma'am, ma ma you spoke about the book, your book, which is going to come up uh, very soon. We are, we are all looking for the book because I, I had some idea that the book is complete. So, I'm looking for the book to come out so that we can read mm. Uh, would you like to talk about a couple of uh, other inspiring books which uh, you think audience uh, can give it a try? So would you like to talk about some of these books which you like reading? Okay, uh, right now, of course, I have been spending a lot of time on reading books on education, you know. So okay. I have been spending uh, time on, and recently I've been reading a book about uh, teachers, you know, government oh, wow. teachers, you know. Wow. And uh, it's written by a gentleman called S. Sridhar who works with the uh, 
uh, Premji Azim Premji Foundation, and he has conducted a study on uh, teachers in government schools and the wonderful stories that he has written, you know, about these teachers fills me with a sense of awe and respect for these teachers under the difficult conditions that they come to school. And uh, while government has such such beautiful, uh, I would say, schemes for education and children, perhaps it doesn't reach them to that extent. So I think uh, that's some of the things that we need to fix and correct. Anyway, beyond that creativity, then, you know, if you look at Howard Gardner, his uh, he talks about uh, five minds of the future. You know, today, Parents are only focused upon the 90% and the 100% and the kind of marks that you've fetched to get into an institution. Yeah. But I mean, for as way back as 2014-15, Narayan Murthy used to talk about employability. And even people are still talking about employability. CII has talked about employability. And employability is not just about good marks. It's not about, it's about being able to decide. It's be, being able to think. And those are the things that are coming into focus in the new national education policy. So there has to be a mind shift change in the way education is happening in our schools. And I think uh, people are becoming aware of that. And I think to some extent it started happening. So people are becoming aware. And uh, I think our schools in Jamshedpur are particularly more aware of trying to build the skills of the children, the ethics mm -hmm. and the morality. So there are many, very many unique things that are happening in our schools in Jamshedpur. Which are reflected in the book, which I have. Very about. powerful, ma'am. I think what we said is very powerful because I recall having spoken with uh, so managing director as well as with a chairperson, very senior people. Because I, I think this today's interaction must be thirtieth, uh, three zero thirtieth uh, heart to heart wow. conversation. I yeah, think this all happened in just three or four months time. I think now I think almost every week I'm having two or three interactions. So that's a great, that's a good thing. I recall having interaction with two or three very senior people and they said that while hiring people. So my question was that, you know, while hiring a top leadership team or while hiring some senior people, which are those qualities which you keep in mind? They said very categorically that, and, and they all said one thing, they didn't even talk about qualification, degrees, nothing, experience. They didn't even talk about it. They said one thing that Arun, we have spent a lot of time while knowing about their childhood days, I think they are looking for character. They're looking for that, you know, a winning mindset, that that strength of character. They said that we go deeper while listening to the person when the person narrates the story of his childhood days, the way you spoke about your parent and then the way you spoke about this very, very happy childhood memories. So what kind of memories they're going to talk about? Because I think though the chairman, they, these people didn't tell me, but I could connect. What they actually wanted to say is that if a child is not uh, talking about some of these very happy memories, it means the child has not been listened to by parents, has not been listened to by the society. And probably that has got an impact on the way the child is going to behave once the, once the child, child has grown up. So they spoke a lot about the family background, about the years while growing up, about, of course, education also about the kind of things they feel connected while talking about. For example, while do they talk about trust? Do they use the words like keywords like character? Do they use keywords like uh, family values? Do they use keywords like uh, listening, listening skill, listening ability? And I think this is a very, very powerful uh, interaction which we are having, very insightful thing we are, we are talking about. Because ma'am, I have seen that because of, I, have, I have personally been a part of many uh, hiring interviews and I have seen that we can get people with qualifications and degrees, but attitude, that team working, that inherent intrinsic, for example, love to talk to people, the same quality which you have, which I, which I, oh, I, which I hope many, you know, more and more HR people might be developing, or maybe we are getting people into HR who have got this ability, this intrinsic quality. When we go at a deeper level, these are the human values which actually are shaping a person to become the person that he has become. Look, look at. I think if you just take a couple of examples, Barack Obama, childhood days. I just was looking, I looked at, there's a book which Barack Obama, Obama has written. And I just had a look at the reverse cover, you know, back cover page. And all that he has spoken about is his journey to trace his childhood days, to trace his roots, connections. He went to Hawaii, he went to some other country, he went to South Africa, Africa, because he wanted to check. Uh, he wanted to have a check at the places where his parents grew, you know. So it shows that the guy is very deeply connected, deeply rooted. Yeah. And once it happens, the person has got very strong character. Nothing, nothing can shake him up. 
And Joe Biden, for example, he has gone through some of the most challenging moments. And the very fact yeah. that at the age of 60, 76, I think he is one of the most inspiring people. At the age of, I've seen 60, 50 people start giving up. And this guy at the age of 76, 78, he is still standing, standing for his country. And this is, I think there was a, there was a report which says that there is a 40% probability that he may not complete the term while being alive. You know, that, these are the, these are the people who have got a passion, purpose. Now, where exactly this strength of character is coming? Childhood days, their family bonds. Yes. And I think it's uh -huh. very, uh, it's very interesting. Uh, it's, it's, it's not, it's actually a bit ironical to see that in today's world, we are all talking about reels and phones and this and that, and we're not spending that time, which is so important. And as I'm telling you, I think my wife and she watches the video. She is going to show this video to me or Mr. Arun Singh. How many of you, how many times you are listening to your kids? <laughs> <laughs> that could be for a different reason because I'm always thinking about coaching books and this and that and video interaction. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but I think I should not be, I, I'm laughing at me, not exactly. I'm not laughing with, uh, laughing at any other person. Yeah, yeah, I can understand. Yeah. So, when there is a book uh, one of my friends, so sorry, we, are, we are working on some uh, projects. Uh, Sputi is one of my friends, she is in Pune. Think and win life Dhoni, Ranchi, connection, because you have a study, you have, you have spoke about Ranchi in a city. Now, this guy is talking about what? Thinking, thinking, thinking. So, these are the five secrets, and these are all related to mindset. All related to mindset. Patience. Bhai, result Pale process par to dhyan do. That's one of the chapters. Process, follow the process. He's just talking about process. He says that when I have to hit a ball, I do not even think whether what will happen with if somebody catches the ball, what will happen. I'll just follow the process. I'm just going to okay. do what I'm going to do. And that's all. Uh, that is the thing which makes Dhoni. And still people are looking at number, percentage, qualifications, and background. Uh, there's no, the, 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 I mean, Dhoni is one of the most successful batsmen and captain. Absolutely. And, uh, and, of course yes. he, and, he, he he's and rightly you said that I was just listening to him recently and he rightly you said that he is talking about focusing on the bat ball coming on towards him. That's it. He's focusing on that. And that's how he manages to stay ahead of the game. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. He just Being in the, the present. Absolutely. Being in the present and doing what you are doing very well. And the same is true with, we have, we have seen uh, many quite a few cases studies. The same is exactly true with Virat Kohli. Once he turned, so, you know, one of the things, yeah, yeah. one of the things that comes out, actually, there is a common man, so we'll come to that also after, yeah. after you go on, go on, yeah. So, one of the things that comes out very strongly is, you know, like when you're talking about a successful person, uh, you know, being mindful of what you're doing, being very, being in the present. And uh, this is some, this is an experiment which has been carried out in schools, you know, like I, as part of the CEIR where I'm a mentor. Uh, it, they have carried out 15 minutes of daily mindfulness practice for a long time, for several months. And many of the principals, they engaged their own school children in the mindfulness practice. And they have reaped tremendous benefits out of it. They see a sense of sthirta, you know, being a stable stability and uh, better, better focus on what the child is doing. So mindfulness is what you are talking about as one of the mantras of success as well, I would say. Being mindful. Absolutely, ma'am. Yeah. Absolutely. But actually, this is the same passion or same purpose because of which I have started a program from 1st of August. Okay. Uh, MMRG, Magical Morning Rituals for Greatness, in which mindfulness, that is meditation, is one of those 20, 30 smallest small micro practices. And I make people, there are many people from Infosys, many companies who join me Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It's going on. Because I know that it's a requirement for people to spend some time with themselves right in the morning. Maybe this program, which I'm talking about, happens between 5 30 to 6 30, ma'am. I've seen people completely changing because they start becoming people who are smiling. They're reflecting every single day. For example, every day we look back, we reflect back on the last 24 hours and think about some great, grateful moments, some moments to feel good about Gratitude, yes. At least one moment, yeah, at least one moment which was teaching a lesson, but it's just like, you know, you know, we are, we are people who are letting every day pass without that day, teaching us at least one lesson so that we can, we could have taken one micro action. And if you do it for 30 days, I've seen people changing completely. But I think what we're talking about is again, taking us back to the basics of life, the basic values of being with ourselves, of being with our family, because I always tell people that all the powers to, to transform the world reside within us. And actually, I would like. Yeah, to... I have seen it. I have seen this happening with my own friend. You know, I have a very close friend. He's had a very difficult life, 
And uh, at the time of pandemic, she started out with uh, meditation. You know, she's a devotee of uh, Sri Sri Ravi Shankar. And he, of course, helps children you know, get his people to practice mindfulness. And uh, I have seen the transformation that has happened in her today, you know, and she's very peaceful and she's leading a very happy life, as I can see. Actually, so yeah, definitely yeah. it has a lot of power, mind, being uh, mindful of what you do, introspecting will... within yourself. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. And gratitude, about... as you mentioned. And gratitude, gratitude, as you is, mentioned. gratitude is one of the first actually MMRGs with which we start. So gratitude, affirmations, uh, reflecting back on last 24 hours, getting a lesson visualizing our goal, writing our goal, thinking of our two or three most important goals today, because I think people are doing a lot of urgent things. They are not exactly putting time for something which is important. Yes. Every day when people start doing it, it becomes a part of habit. Mm. So, ma'am, I, I recall having spoken with one of, one of my friends. He is a managing director. He said that, Arun, the basic problem, if you ask me, the basic reason why people are suffering and have, they have got all kinds of challenges is the fact that they are not reflecting back on their life. The life is the biggest and best teacher. I think people have got dozens of books within them you know within them i think but people are but i think the world is looking for books and some of these things but they are not paying attention to people they are not paying attention to their diary you know the simple habit of writing a diary or thinking about last 24 mm -hmm. hours i think these are some of the basic virtues which can change the entire world thank you so much man so this is amazing uh, i just wanted to ask you one thing because this is an opportunity which i do not want to miss people keep on talking about kg kindergarten study and uh, montessori my elder daughter, she studied in KG. My younger one is going through Montessori. Would you like to share something on these two? Anything in case in case you want to share? Uh, not too much, but okay. Whatever little I can talk about, you know. I think uh, the Montessori years, if I would rate it, maybe it's the, the very early years of like, like three years, four years. At that age, the child needs to uh, not not study so much as become comfortable with being with people. Yeah. With um, uh, with uh, learning to use their uh, enhance their motor skills, their the fine and the uh, motor skills, the gross motor skills, yeah. and uh, more about being with people, being away from your family, parents, you know, and uh, gradually getting into the stream of academics learning, you know, so. Uh, that that's the way I would look at the no, this is perfect, even up to KG. I would say even up to KG. I think uh, there should not be so much of stress on yeah, learning. But did you say that the age of till the age of eight to nine years? I think they, these are these are less important. But yeah, you and know, yeah, spending some time with yeah because you are learning a different language when you come to school. You know, you may not be uh, English be, uh, coming from a English speaking background. You may not be coming from a Hindi speaking background. So therefore, even today, the education policy is talking about continuing with the home language for as a medium of learning up till five, six, seven, eight years, you know, like as far as you can take it, you know, maybe this up till awesome. class awesome. three. Yeah, we'll just take five more minutes, ma'am. Ma'am, another yeah. thing, uh, mm -hmm. I know that you have been uh, a kind of globe traveler. I think you have traveled across many countries. Would you like to share something about some of the places which, which have got a special place in, the, in your heart? Some of the yeah, I, I, I have been widely traveled. Uh, yes, we have both of us, we've traveled a lot, very various countries. And um, both in India, not only abroad, but as well as in India, you know. So people, as places of historical interest, yeah. they are, uh, they appeal to me a lot, you know. So I would say Europe has a wide appeal for me, particularly because it has been the center of wars and yeah. unifications and changes happening. So there's a lot of cultural hodgepodge of hodge turmoil that has happened in Europe. So I love this. I loved Europe. Yeah. Uh, not, I mean, well, it's a beautiful country. I mean, it's a beautiful uh, continent. Most countries are beautiful, but there's a lot of history there, you know, more than America. I would love to travel. I love traveling to Europe. Europe. Egypt, again, another place which has a lot of, you know, the past, you know, the past really engrosses me. So history, your Egypt has a lot of history and uh, how, uh, you know, medical science got, you know, the roots of medical science, you, you can see in the hieroglyphic, um, uh, hieroglyphic pictures, wherever they are, you know, they show you whenever you visit European, uh, Egyptian 
country. When you when you visit Egypt, you will be able to see all that. You know. Wow, you have just inspired so, me because my sister-in-law is the Nile. Uh, hmm. last more than almost close to ten years, and she keeps on asking us to come to Egypt because you must go. Time, you right? must go. <laughs> Egypt is a beautiful. I mean, it's beautiful. Yes. So, but we we, we have also been in Egypt in the heart of the turmoil when the revolution happened in Egypt. <laughs> that was a time we were there once. <laughs> And it was very adventurous and a learning experience for us being there at that time. But then we came out of it safely. Closer to home, Rajasthan, mm. beautiful place. I love the place. Mm. And uh, My heart also. Japan, Japan interests me. Japan with all its quality concepts and the beautiful small country, how well they manage their, yeah. how well they are managing the country. Beautiful. And, and, and I think the kind of discipline which people yes. display is something which... Yes, the kind of discipline. That, yes, that's that's exactly what I mean when I talk about Japan. Mm. So, mm. interesting. That's, that's awesome. Ma'am, would you like to share a couple of movies or some movies which uh, which you think people should watch? Some nice movies. Some inspiring. Okay, so, you know, because I am a student of history and I've talked about history yeah. even in historical places that I visit, I like visiting with. Movies also, historical movies do interest me. But beyond that, uh, historical movies, of course, uh, they have their own significance. But uh, over and above, I would especially like to mention a couple of movies which I really, really, really love. loved. One of them being, uh, you know, Invictus, which is a film on Nelson Mandela. Invictus. And the uh, character is played by Morgan Freeman. It's a beautiful movie on, on how, despite facing so many hardships, and being exiled for such a long period of time, Nelson Mandela maintained his sanity and he became the leader of his own country, South Africa. Another movie I would like to again mention here is 12 Angry Men. It's an old 1957 movie. And um, it's a, it's uh, the Henry Fonda. The Hindi version is Ruka Hua Faisla. Ek uh, Ruka Hua Faisla. Yes, yes, yes. It's another beautiful lesson, lesson on leadership, you know. Wow. So wow. There are, it, it's a story about uh, 12 jury men yeah. who have to uh, give the verdict on a, uh, on a convict. Uh, and there is one of them, Henry Fonda, who believes that the verdict should be not guilty. During the time that this jury is ensconced in the room and trying to uh, decide and finalize the verdict, this gentleman, he tries to bring out what are the points in favor of that not guilty verdict. And it's wonderful the way he is able to convince. That's one lesson in leadership. You know, you don't have to shout to persuade people to your point of view. Beautifully, uh, beautifully presented. So beautiful movie. And of course, there are lots more movies, but these are two things I would have. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much for sharing both the names because I'm pretty sure that once we dig down into the childhood memories or childhood childhood times of Nelson, Nelson Mandela, I'm pretty sure I'm going to find something similar to what we just discussed. He also must have been a person. I think there's some network issue. So, ma'am, I think thank you so much for sharing the name of both the movies because I'm pretty sure that if you go back to the first movie, Invictus, if we... Uh, look into the childhood days of uh, Nelson Mandela. I'm pretty sure he also must have gone through some of these character building, you know, experiences. He he also must have a lot of lot of lot of things from his from from his parents, from his family. And I think this is true also, because I think all the laws of universe are the same. I think we spoke about building character and spending those initial few years while focusing on things like trust and some of these things which are very important. So, ma'am, thank you so much, ma'am. Would you like to share anything else for the benefit of our audience before we close it? Because it has been an amazing interaction. Uh, I think, ma'am, you wanted this to be for 25, 30 minutes. Now it is one hour. <laughs> thank you so much for your time. Uh, anything else with which you would like to share? Actually, I'm amazed at the fact that you've drawn out so much from me. So there's a lot of lear learning to happen from you. I mean, there's a <laughs> no, lot of takeaways no. from me personally. And, uh, well, that's all, I think. I would like to thank you once again for... Uh, thank, thank you so much, ma'am. And I think we have started this interaction while making a mention of inspiration, which I, I, I give this example that whenever I think people have spoken with you, they always have got this one why, which is very inspiring. And you give the entire credit, I think, to uh, some people in your life. Uh, so audience, let me share a, a, a little thing about A. Mishra, sir. When I look when I look back on my life and career, I always tell people that I have reported to six or seven or maybe six or seven or eight people. 
But if there is one person who taught me the most of management lessons, and I saw him actually living everything which he spoke about to the extent of 100% accuracy, it is A. Mishra, sir. He was the first person who also got me into one of those two days uh, inspirational and management development programs which we did in, uh, which actually he conducted in West Bogar and I was working as his assistant, assistant. And when I look back today, I think he has been one leader who actually has laid the teams as per the tenets which some of the best brains have written in books. Books actually work and one, ex and the best example to me is A. Mishra sir. Thank yes. you so much, ma'am, for having I, I would really, I would really give a lot of credit to my husband for uh, giving a, some better shape to my life. Absolutely, <laughs> you know, absolutely, has... absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. He is one of those people that uh, uh, that I, we all look, look, we all look up to, and hope yes. to have him also as one of the guests in uh, this series of interactive uh, sessions. Thank you so much, ma'am. Have a great Sunday. Thank, Thank you, you so much for sparing this time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.